thinking about the closing video for the neurobiology of everyday life, I wanted to share with you a few minutes about the neurobiology of one of my clients' everyday life. I'd like to introduce to you Heather. I'll show you a short video clip of her in just a minute. She had an accident eight years ago that left her initially a quadriplegic and now um, a paraplegic. So she's in a wheelchair, um, has reflexes in her legs, uh, not much volitional movement. She has gained through eight years of therapy volitional movement in her arms up to the wrists. Um, and when she came to me, her hands were in this position and she doesn't really use her fingers. She has sensory perception in the fingers, doesn't really use them. She can pry them open. She can hang things from her thumbs, uh, but she has no volitional movement in her fingers. In her accident, she didn't break her spine, but she had a subluxation around C3, C4. And of course, over eight years of very hard work, adaptive yoga, swimming, and intensive physical therapy, she has gained her arms back. I decided that we could do some experimentation with some neurosculpting, mental entrainment, and meditation. And I thought, if nothing else, maybe we could help her manage her stress because she has a lot of day-to-day -day stress that we don't normally think about. So we started our sessions and we're about six sessions. It occurred to me that in her uh, accident, which was she was on a horse and she, the horse flipped her off and ended up flipping over backwards onto her. It occurred to me that if you were to hold reins very tightly, you might be in this position. So uh, three sessions ago, we started working on decoupling the body memory of this position just prior to the accident from the charge of the accident. So we started decoupling those in some mental entrainment exercises. And then I asked Heather to, for the next couple of weeks, spend time doing this with her hands, opening her fingers, uh, rolling them on surfaces because she does have some spotty sensory perception. I had remembered reading a study where uh, macaque monkeys have their digits tied together for a prolonged period of time and because of that the neuroplastic nature of the somatotopy in the motor and sensory cortex fused those two individuated digit maps into one map. And then I recall in that study that the differentiation happened once therapy was involved. And I thought, well, perhaps Heather's maps have over eight years fused into one map. So we tried uh, a neurosculpting uh, entrainment session where I had her focus on first identifying the somatotopy in her mind's eye in both the motor and sensory cortex in the pre and post central gyrus. And I had her imagine five distinct segments of the hand map. And we had her do some mental entrainment where first we downregulated her limbic response, second we upregulated her prefrontal cortex activity so she could be in full focus and mental engagement um, and then we had her do these visualizations and in each digit map that she was mentally creating we had her associate some uh, colors textures had her imagine lighting them up with electric current and at each striation we had her then imagine sending that lit up signal down through uh, the brain stem down the arm and to the specific digit and when she got to each digit um, I had her say the name of the digit and I had her touch her digits together to bring in that somatic awareness and that that reinforcement we did this for each finger on each hand and then we went back again and did it where I asked if it'd be okay for me to touch her fingers so now when she said the name of her thumb and did this process, I would go and touch her thumb so she could feel um, external sensory stimulus. 
Uh, I'd like to share with you in this next little clip what happened to Heather and the volitional movement of her thumbs. Back to your fingers. Your thumb, look at that. That's crazy. You're moving your thumb. I was actually, I was actually willingly too. You're moving your <laughs> thumb, Heather. That's so crazy. By will. When was the last time you did that? It's been a long time. I'm like almost in shock. We are in the early phases of this work together. We're only about six sessions in. But learning about Heather's everyday neurobiology and its limitations has taught me the gifts of her neurobiology. And it's reminded me of the neuroplastic nature that we each have inside of us to heal. It's been quite a journey. And I'm looking forward to sharing more with you as our work with Heather continues.